God's beauty is all around us and my goal as an artist is to capture and interpret that beauty on canvas and to take you, the viewer, along with me on this painting journey. Hi, and thank you for joining me. Um, this is Painting Journeys. My name is Kitty Lynn Klisch. And we're not traveling very far today, but first of all, I have to tell you about last, uh, our last segment when we were in Assisi, Italy. And um, I don't know if you remember that adventure or not. I lost my credit card and oh my, it went on and on. But anyway, I chose to do this little corner of the garden. And what, what really moved me about it was that the, there was an arrow pointing away from the garden and I thought that on a sign and I thought that was kind of cute. So I, that's what I decided to paint. Um, so this is what, the, what it looked like, the photograph that I worked from. And then, after we worked on it for an hour, this is how it looked. It was pretty rough. And then, I took it back to my studio at home, and I finished it, and here it is. And as you can see, a lot has been added. I have punched up the flowers, added a few extras. I, over here, I brought in a, um, a, some flowers up here in that um, in that pot that uh, the window pot because I mean why why have that there if you're not going to have something growing in it okay and here's that funny sign it was metal like a copper and it you know there's that arrow pointing that the garden is this way and it seemed to me that all the garden was over here so here's my corner garden in Assisi Italy and now today, though, I have something very exciting. We are going to um, stay right here in Sheboygan County, where, I'm, where I live. Um, and we're going to go to a farm in the Kettle Moraine. Um, the Kettle Moraine Forest is a, a, it's a, a big area of Sheboygan uh, County. And there are many farms out there that are like a century, maybe 150 years old. And this is, this is a, a, a very old farm. And the farmer was so um, accommodating. A group of us painters, we went out one Saturday morning and um, to, to paint on his property. And I saw this red truck. Okay, and it's it's right here in my painting, and I it just wasn't sitting in the right position, you know. So I wanted it moved. So can you believe that he actually brought a um, oh um, a battery uh, charger out, a portable one, and he charged the battery and he cranked this old thing up and it was like smoke was blowing out of the back of it. And, and he was, you know, moving it around and then he'd holler, is this okay? Is this okay? <laughs> anyway, it was, it was very, it was very, uh, he was very accommodating. He and his family were very lovely people. But this is how far I got. Now, I don't know if, if you understand what a plein air painting is. Plein air means to paint outside in the open air. And some artists do that year round. They uh, will go out in the winter, in the snow, in the ice, rain, whatever, and paint. Well, I'm not that hardy of a soul, but this was a rather cool day. And, and even though it was cool, it was quite sunny. And so I tried to find a little shady spot where I could, you know, peek at my scene. So I was back over here in the, in the um, where I was standing when I was painting. So I'm going to be finishing this today for you, I hope. Um, that's my goal. And... Um, 
uh, and telling you, you know, some different things about the place. Okay, I get my paint. And as, as usual, it's just the standard palette with my, my colors. I like to keep all of my warm colors on this side of my palette and all of my cool colors over here. I um, don't know if you know this or not, but the opposite of uh, like the complement of a warm color will always be a cool color and vice versa. So you always have to take, if you want to make a color, you always, and it, say you want to make a warmer color. Okay, I want to make a nice warm gray. So I'm gonna take this blue and I'm gonna add just a little tiny bit of this warm cad red light and put that in there and mix that around. And that is going to make a real gray um, for me. You see that? I call that my elephant gray. Okay. And if I take that and I put just a little bit of white in it, not much, I'll get a nice, pretty, warm color. If it's not warm enough, I'll add a little more of the red to it. Okay, now, maybe just a little more red. Okay, now I've got a nice, warm gray. And just to show you the contrast, I'm gonna take, over here I have Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is just ivory black and ultramarine blue together. But if I take that gray, of which is a very gray color, if I take that and I add a little white to that and make the gray here, hopefully you can see how cool this is and how warm this is. So that, that is the difference between a warm gray and a cool gray. So that's enough of the lessons for tonight today. Now let's just start painting here. I want to kind of, I, re, I just f fell in love with this red door here. I'm not going to go back into this area until I get my uh, boards and things finished um, over here on the side. So I think I'll just kind of, um, I know we have some dark up in here and the dark will be kind of um, that cool gray that I showed you because that's in shadow. And then the, that's coming down here. Alrighty, and then coming out of that, we'll have these these lighter, warmer uh, boards that are coming down here. And to to get those boards to look like boards, we kind of have to load the brush with a lot of a lot of paint so that the different colors will show through. It almost looks like I used a knife up above that day when I was out there painting. Anyway, there's this, there was this old barn there and we sat in the barn on hay bales to eat our lunch and it was just enchanting. And the farmer was so nice he brought out all kinds of drinks for us, and it was just, it was, I don't know, it was just like being in another world. I live, I mean, the Sheboygan Falls, the town that I live in is, it's, it's small, it's quaint, very quaint. 
Um, and but it isn't at all like a farm, you know. We moved here to this area from California. Oh my, quite a few years ago now. I'm thinking pretty close to 25 years ago. And see that's that, see that where the woods ends, okay, it comes down that far. And then, then it has um, that little shadow there. That's what that's for. Okay. And I'll probably want to get some little, little things in there to kind of make it look like, like the boards. And just kind of play with it a little bit, you know. Doesn't have to be perfect, that's for sure. Um, and now I'm going to come down here, underneath here, oh, okay, and do this. This was the most beautiful, this area here where I have the brick. I have moved this a little bit from, or I must have moved when I took the photograph because there was more of that uh, um, field stone um, base of that building there. And oh, that field stone was so beautiful. And years ago, they would go out into the fields and have to pick that stone so that they could till, till the fields and grow their crops. So hence they made stone fences around their property, sort of like the people in Ireland do. And uh, you can go out and into the countryside and and you'll see the remains of these stone fences that were put there by the early settlers. And it's just amazing to think that how, they, how hard their life was. I remember when I first moved here to Wisconsin from California, I was driving down this road one day out more out in the country and I was thoroughly enchanted with with the place because it was so different than the scenery that I'd been used to seeing. But I saw this old farmhouse and across the front porch, she had a clothesline. And on the clothesline, in the middle of the winter, and I swear it was our first winter here was very hard it was like 22 below zero. She had clothes hanging, underwear, her husband's underwear, and some bloomers. I couldn't believe it. I thought, what a hardy soul that would get out and hang their laundry in the min middle of the winter time like that. You know, and then another thing that I couldn't get over is as I would drive along the roads looking for things to paint, women would be on these great big tractor-like things and they'd be mowing the lawns. You know, and I thought, oh my God, I'm never going to be mowing the lawn. I don't care what my husband says. That's not going to be my job. I guess you can tell right now I'm kind of a city girl. <laughs> That's all right, though, to each his own. Um, you know, but I just, I was impressed. I was impressed with, the, with the, their lifestyle. What I'm trying to do right now, and I, it's very difficult when you start a painting and then you come back into it a couple weeks later. And you, you don't feel the same. You're not the same person. When you come to your easel, you're a culmination of everything that you've experienced right up until this moment in your life. And so where I was and how I felt the mood I was in, everything, that's all different than it was the day that I was out there painting. So it's kind of hard to get this 
you know, to recapture where I was. And so that's why I'm just kind of poking around over here, hoping and praying that something's going to happen here pretty soon that's going to look a little bit better than what it does now. But anyway, oh, I forgot what I was even going to say to you. Where was I? Um, I don't know. It'll come to me, hopefully, before the hour is out. <laughs> Does that happen to you? You just be talking along, and all of a sudden you lose what you're talking about? I don't think that looks too bad. We'll take a little bit more dark and put in here. And then I'll just kind of soften that edge there and bring that down. And I think that's just probably going to have to be good enough for over here. I think when we get that red door in, that's going to, to do it for us. Oh, I remember what I was going to just tell you. I don't know where you live, but to me, the, some of the bravest people in the world are farmers, are the farmers, because they have no guarantee, they have no guarantee of, of what the weather's gonna be like, what the crop prices are gonna be, you know? if they're going to get sick and not be able to get their crop in. I mean, you talk about a risk taker. You know, you think, oh, farmer, dull, boring life. And those people work 24-7. I mean, it's just amazing. I couldn't do that. I couldn't live that kind of life. I could never be a farmer's wife. My husband grew up on a farm, and he hated it. He left and went to the city. You know, it just, not for everybody, but then, what is that old saying, different strokes for different folks? I think we'll put a little more of a highlight along the top of this little roof right here. And it seems to be a little too yellow to me. I think I want it to be a little grayer, a little lighter, brighter. Hmm. Stiff paintbrush. Wonder if that means I didn't clean it well enough. Oh, that's too light, kitty. Okay. Yeah, that's a little better. Yeah. Sometimes you stand in front of the easel and it's so easy to make magic. And then other times you stand in front of the easel and it's like pulling teeth to make magic. I wonder why that is. Okay, I'm just gonna try a little something with my knife here. See if I can get a little edge on that knife, maybe not that much, and come with that knife and kind of just in a couple spots here, try to make a little magic for us. Yeah, that did it. All righty, now I feel better. Something worked, that's always a good feeling. Okay, now at that door. I can't wait to get to that door. All right, let's see here. Now I'm going to put the, I'm going to, you see this light that is going right around the door there. Okay, I'm going to put that on first because if I put the red on first, red will bleed into the white and, um, it's very difficult. So I always instruct my students, 
put the white on first and then put in the red. Because if the white bleeds in, uh, to the red, it's not that big a deal. But I suppose you've all noticed that I, I like to paint kind of thick. Impasto. Now I'm going to come with a little bit of dark. Maybe just make this just a little bit lighter here. Oh. Take my trusty wipe out and kind of soften this down. There we go. And now then we have a kind of a of a shadow inside the door. And right up here underneath here. And we have it on the outside right here. Now I'm going to come with my brush that I was making the slats with and narrow that down by coming in with what's behind it here, coming in from the shape around it. There we go. Okay. Now we have that window in there. We have to paint the window. I always like to put, you know, even though that's very dark in there in the window, I like to put a little bit of alizarin crimson in the dark where the window's going to be. So I'm just going to paint the whole thing. There we go, just a nice thin coating. I'm kind of like scumbling right now. There. And this needs to come across here and be just a little more pointed right there. Oh boy. There we go. And now then, I'm just going to take that little tiny brush again. See about making some little cross lines across there. And that really isn't all that, that dark a red, that door. It's kind of a real uh, faded look. Um, you can see it up here, too. And you see his dish for his television. There's no way I'm putting that on. I leave things like that off. I don't like to put um, um, like electric poles and telephone lines and things like that into paintings. I don't know why. I just don't. Okay, so I have to kind of divide this into thirds there to make sure I'm going to go and then it has to be in thirds here. Now it'll probably it'll probably be messy but that'll be okay because I can always come back in and clean it up with the dark.
And that really looks crooked, doesn't it? Okay, so now we'll come back and we'll clean this up. We need a little more red in there. I saw, I see some artists, they, they don't worry about crooked doorways and crooked windows and, and things like that, but I don't know, I don't feel real comfortable with that. A little hint of, now this I'm just gonna smoosh in here because, how do you like that word? Isn't that artistic, smoosh? <laughs> Anyway, I'm just going to get rid of that because it's all crooked and I don't like it. See how easy that was? There we go. In fact, I'm going to come with a little blue over it. I think that, that window needs a little bit of the um, feeling that we're seeing a little, maybe a little sky in it or something. Okay, now I'm going to try to put the red crossbars in there at the right angle. Nope, I just keep wanting to go up with it. Hmm. Well, we'll just clean it up again. What can I say here? There we go. There. That's okay. Now we'll put some red onto the door. I really have to get moving here because I want to get that tree in the background there. I guess that doesn't look too bad. I'm not going to put those little um, signs he's got in the window. We'll just have a little doorknob right there. And I think I want to go in here, though, and kind of soften this up a little bit. this and, and okay I'll knock that down just a little bit that's just a little too harsh and we'll knock this down there we go that's good enough sure now we'll just put some light on it when the light hits it everything it changes then. We'll just put a little light right down here. There, there we go. That doesn't look too bad. And then underneath here, we have this dark, um, okay, because that's kind of in a shadow. Maybe if I add a little bit of blue to that. So the dark, the black is a little harsh. Whoops, whoa. 
Whoa, girl. Let's come back here and lighten that up a little bit, that shadow. There we go. That's better. Lighten that one up, too. That looks better. Yeah. And the only thing that we have left here is, whoops, not quite so much. A little bit of dark on the bottom of this wood here coming up where it's kind of coming up from the, there. Okay, that looks okay. All right, let's move on. Um, hmm. This tree is really bothering me. So what I'm going to do, it's got lots of rough paint on it. What I'm going to do, and try not to listen, is I'm going to scrape this down. And by doing this, what I'm doing is I'm scraping off the clumps of paint. As I was saying, I paint rather with thick paint, a la prima, and it's leaves bumps and sometimes I don't when I try to go over it then it doesn't it doesn't look um, like I want it to look because it you're going over these bumps underneath and it will look like um, you paint it over it'll look like you corrected it you know and if you don't want it to look like that why now this tree over in here, okay, that area right in there is quite dark, right in here. And my, my trunk of my tree, I think where I st stepped out and took this picture was not in the exact same place that I was painting because I see a lot of things that are a little different. But I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to go with what I have here, with what, is, what it's telling me right now. Okay. And this is coming down a little bit in here. And we do have that lighter up there. This back in here seems like it needs to be just a little bit darker too. Not much, just a little bit. It, it's um, maybe perhaps just a little bluer green. I'll use my cool green. Viridian is a nice cool green to use when you want to have a little bluer look in your... Uh, green greenery in your trees a nice viridian will do that quite nice in fact i think i'm going to take that right up to here i know it doesn't look that way on the painting but my goal is not to copy the photograph but to create something that i think looks like a painting all right now i've got some stuff going back there and it's starting to look I'm starting to get excited. You can always tell when I get excited because I start talking faster. And I am getting excited. I can see, I, I'm starting to feel it and I can see different things happening that are gonna make it come to life for me. And that is a wonderful feeling. It's, ooh, my goodness. There's nothing quite like being able to take this canvas and work on it and, and make it do what you hope it will do. Okay, got a little bit of dark back in here in between those trees. And then we've got a little bit of light. We're getting that yellow lighten up that green 
Now I have a, I'm working with a very grayed green and um, a grayed yellow green. And that's going to give me a whole different look. And I'm trying to like dance my brush, just dance that brush and, and make that stuff happen out there. And there we go. Okay, now we can see that there is a lot happening back there. And it's so much more interesting now than it was before. Now I want to take a little bit of my pure sap green and add a little bit of white to it. And I'm going to come up in here and I'm just going to try to get this to be a little more airier. I mean, it's, it's, it's on there now, but I want to add a little bit of airiness to this tree to make it look, maybe that's too light. I think we need to go a little darker. Yeah, I think this will be better. There. No, it's still not dark enough. I'll add a little blue and I'll take a little bit of the yellow. There we go. There. That's what I'm talking about. And you see now, I have that dark base in here, but there's light showing up in front. You know, so there is the dark base but then there, there's branches that are coming forward. And so you see the dark and through there. And up in here, you see the lighter. I'm afraid that my trees grew. But oh well, you know what? If I, bet, I bet if I waited 20 years and went back out there to the farm, his trees would be that big too. <laughs> So nothing like helping nature, huh? Oh dear. We have so much fun. I, at least I hope you're having fun. I'm having fun. All right, now, right back in here, I want to make a real, I want to make it really light. And so that it looks like it's quite distant. So I'm going to make a cool green. And I'm going to put that back there. Ooh, don't you love it? Yeah. Now that really looks like it's popping there. That's what I want. Maybe we'll put a little bit of that up in the tree there, too. Maybe there's some spots where that tree isn't hanging down that, that far. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. You can tell I'm having fun, huh? I'm just goofing, playing. That's what it is, it's playing. There. Okay, now down here, it looks to me like it's kind of a gold color. Right down in here, it kind of softens up into this bright green. So I'm going to put that down there. And now when I painted the truck, the cast shadow was um, right underneath the truck and you could see through to the other side. So I'm going to keep that look, but maybe not have it quite as, quite as um, um, wide as it is there. Now I like this, I like this really bright stuff that I made. So I think over in here, I think we'll have a little bit more of that. Only here, we're going to make it come up so that it looks like bushes or something. 
You know how I like to improve upon nature. Alrighty. So we're going to make that look like it's bushes. And then we're going to come in there and we're going to put some beautiful, bright, bright red. That's why I wore red today, because I knew I'd want to put red, red flowers in there. Maybe, no, I better do this differently. I better back up, take that green brush, get some nice dark green. And I, you know, you have to plant those roses before they're going to bloom, Kitty. So let's get the planting done here. Now the light is coming from this direction. Now we'll take a little bit of that light and dance around on here. And then we'll make a flower garden. And who knows, maybe they're not roses. Maybe they are... Who knows what they are? It can be anything we want them to be, right? There are flowers. <laughs> you know what, I think I should have made those sunflowers. That's what I should have done. I should have made those into sunflowers. What was I thinking? Hmm. Well, you know what? I don't think it's too late. Let's do that. We'll wipe them out. And we'll make big sunflowers out of them. Well, at least I think we'll wipe them out. Yeah, we should get most of it off. And I've seen sunflowers that are kind of a dark orangey red, so we'll just, or maybe the sunflowers will have some little red flowers in there. I just don't, uh, I don't think I like all that red. So I'm just gonna scratch this out here. And you know, <clears throat> one thing that I tell my students is you cannot create out of fear. If you don't like something, don't leave it. Change it, fix it, come back in and do something different. Okay, now I like that little bit of red that's still on there, that's showing through. I like that. And I think I'm gonna put some stalks and stuff growing around this tree here. And then I am going to take this brush and I'm going to lighten that up and go back in there a little bit to soften that edge. There we go. And put that back a little bit. Come in here with some yellow. Soften it in. There now all that stuff doesn't look like it's growing in front of the truck. And now I'm going to take a clean brush and I'm going to make some sunflowers. Is that what I want? Do I really want sunflowers? I think so. <laughs> Looks pretty bright, doesn't it? Well, we'll tone them down in a minute. Those are those great big ones. And then we'll put those big brown 
centers into it. I don't know. I don't even think I like these. Hmm. Maybe I just wasn't supposed to have flowers here. We'll loosen them up a little bit so that they don't look all there now. Now they look like they're hanging down like sunflowers do. There we go. A mm, couple of strokes. We need a couple of um, big leaves on them and everything. I mean, what, what would a farmer's farm be like without any sunflowers on there? I can't imagine that. Speaking of sunflowers, that reminds me. When I first moved here, I was driving down the road again. Seems like I was always on the road, huh? I was pretty fascinated with the area, actually. And I found that it was the first time in my life that I had ever seen a field of sunflowers. I had to stop the car and get out and took a m many, many pictures. I could not believe it. I don't know what I thought. I mean, you know, being from the city, I don't know if I thought that sunflowers just, you know, you saw pictures of sunflowers, but that really it was just a seed and a trick, but there, okay, that works. Now, all this leaf that we are left with here that we really need to punch up is this truck. And once we get this truck to look like he is a little more with the program here, There we go. Now he's starting to show up a little better. Oops, little detour here. And then I think, I really think that that is supposed to be more of a wood color on the back of the truck here. And it seems to be like it's a little um, gray um, rather than the red. And it's a, I think it's a wooden bed on the truck. All right, now that, that shows up a little better. And then, of course, he has his bright red. Okay. Let's see here. His tires need to be a little darker. They're kind of dirty though, come to think of it. Of course, why wouldn't they be? They were sitting there in the but we'll just come and try to make them show up just a little bit more. This area up in here was quite a bit darker. Here and right under there where the engine was, that was there. 
I think I want some lines coming across here to kind of show that that, that is wood. Yeah, all right, we're cooking. Let's take a little bit of orange. Let's bring him, really bring him up. That sun is hitting him. He's a happy camper sitting there. Let's just... There. Really make him show. Make him, make him the star of the show. That's what we're doing there. Now, his little red hubcaps or wheels, they were kind of a reddish color going around this way. And then there was dark in the center and right there. And it came around like, whoa, kitty. I'm trying to use a really dark, big brush here because we're running out of time. And I wanted to get this done for you. Let's see here. You know, I've never regretted moving here to Wisconsin. I don't miss Los Angeles. I love it here. The, they have all these ethnic trails and ethnic groups that moved here all the years ago and settled the, the Germans and the Dutch and what they must have gone through to accomplish what they did to make this area like it is. I'm proud to be here. And I know wherever you are, as you're watching this, that you probably love where you live, too. That's not to say, I, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I'm not trying to say my place is the best. I just want to assure you that I love it. There we go. Okay, he's starting to show up a little bit better. Maybe he needs a little bit more in here and definitely needs a little touch back in here. There for the other side. Okay, now I think I need a little more green. I'm seeing that I need a little more of the green coming up in here. There. I'm running out, you know what, I'm running out of the green on my palette, so I have to stop here pretty soon. And it looks like I had a, another tree in here. I don't know if I, yeah, I guess I'll put it in, what the heck. It was there, so we'll, we'll let it grow, let it thrive. And we'll put a little bit of color on this right in here. And <clears throat> we don't have any branches in here. We need to break this up with some branches. Whoops, that's pretty thick, kitty. Oh well, that's what you get for not using a smaller brush. But I think that does help. Now we just need a little highlight on the branches. I'm really liking this. I hope you are. This has really been a lot of fun. He's got a spare tire in the back that we have to show. It's coming up right there. A little spare tire inside of the truck there. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I think 
we're just about done with it. We will, um, I'm going to change the color of the foreground real quick. I want to warm that up for you. It's too cold and light and I want it to be warmer and I should be using a, well, I don't have one handy, so we'll just do it with this. This is the fun part of the painting. This is where you just let her go, let her rip. And here we go. And over to here. And it's perfectly okay if we have some thick stuff. That just means that his little driveway there probably has a few ruts in it. Maybe this needs to be softened up just a little bit right there. And maybe this needs to come up into this a little bit so that there's not such a hard transgression into that. And then if I were to sign this, I would sign it, and I'm just going to sign it real quick um, for you because I can't leave it unsigned. But if I were going to sign this, I would sign it in red. Today's the red day. All right, and I would sign it right here, like so. And just step back, take a look at it. I don't know, it looks okay to me. Thank you so much for joining me today. Once again, this is Painting Journeys with Kitty Lynn Klisch. I've really had fun bringing, uh, finishing this old painting that, uh, well, not old painting, but this painting of an old place, bringing it to life for you on canvas. This was our journey today through the Kettle Moraine to a farm. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye-bye for now.